if you want to learn Python, if you want to master data science, if you want a high paying job as a Python developer, the first thing you got to do is actually install Python. And after you've done that, there's actually five things that you've got to do after it's been installed. And quite frankly, if you don't do that fifth one, I don't even know if you can call yourself a Python developer, but I don't want to waste any more time. I want to show you how to get Python installed, starting off with the download, which is exactly what we're going to do next. Now I've got my glasses on. So, you know, I mean business and the business at hand is installing Python. Now, the first thing you do before you install Python is check to make sure that Python isn't already installed. It's easy to do. Open up PowerShell, open up a command prompt and just type in, you guessed it, Python. And if all of a sudden Bill Gates shows up saying, Hey, I want to sell you Python 3.12 install it in the marketplace, you know, you don't have Python installed and we don't want that old version. No, no, no. We're going to head over to python.org click on that downloads button. And there we go. Python 3.13. That's the one we want the one without the guilt. So click on that. Now, if you want to play on expert level, you can find your operating system and find your architecture, but the website's actually pretty good at guessing what is appropriate. So just click on that link and download the installation file. In a couple of minutes, you can head to your downloads folder. There it is 26 megabytes in size. That's not too big at all. Just double click. A couple of things I'd like to do. I like to select add Python exe to the path. So that's one thing I'm going to ask you to do right here. And then there's a couple of changes I like to make. So I'm going to click custom install. All this looks good. Pip TCL Python test suite idle. We're going to play with that in just a moment, but I'm happy there. I'm going to click next here. You can see that Python environment variables are going to be added. That is what we want. Now, one thing that annoys me is I don't like that installation folder. I like to be able to find my Python installs. So I always have a folder called underscore tools on my machine. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to have a subfolder Python subfolder Python 313. That looks good to me. Once that's done, I'm going to click that install button and let Python get installed. And without further ado, it says setup was successful. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click the close button. I'm going to come back to the command window. I'm going to type in Python dash dash version. And what Python's not found. It wasn't installed. What did I do wrong? I'm a horrible instructor. I'm just joking. That terminal window has to be closed and started up again before it reads those environment variables. So start up a new PowerShell or command window or terminal, then type in py Python. That's not what I want. Python dash dash version and boom, all of a sudden 3.13. So we have got Python installed, but we don't want to stop there. There's five things that you have to do after you've installed Python. Otherwise you can't consider yourself a Python developer. The first, is just opening up the interpreter, making sure that things are working by writing little Python code. And this is the interpreter right here. It's the black Python icon that you see. And if I say one divided by two, it tells me it's 0.5. If I say what's two times three, it says it's six. If I say what's 17 divided by three, it says 5.6. And I can even use this REPL type of environment to declare variables x equals 10 print out x 10 gets printed out. We are turning into Python developers right away instantaneously after installing Python. Now let's take a look at idle. That is a learning environment an IDE for developers that we can use. Oh boy, that font is pretty small. I'm going to change that in just a minute, but let's check this out. Let's print hello world. That is the requisite, right? prints hello world right back to us. And I can't see that. Can you see that? <laughs> I need better glasses. I'm going to say, let's configure idle here, change that font to something a little bit more respectable, like a, an 18. I can see that right now. You can change the font. You can do all sorts of things with different shortcuts and keys as well. I'm going to change the size of the window. So feel free to go in here and customize your environment. Now, probably want to install PyCharm or VS code with Python, but we're going to get to that later. Okay. So let's close that window and start up the integrated development and learning environment idle. Once again, there's that 
18 point font goodness that I was looking for. And let's just throw some code in here. One divided by two, that equals 0.5. But let's go a little beyond that. Let's actually declare some variables. I'm going to create a variable called name. And I'm going to grab input from the user. I'm going to say input and then in single quotes inside round brackets, what is your name? Click enter. It's going to say, hey, what is your name? And I'm going to say, my name is Cameron. Then I'm going to print out name and it's going to print out Cameron. So there you go. We're becoming Python experts here. And I think we've tackled three of the five things that we need to do. The, the fourth is actually creating your own Python file. Get out of these REPL environments. Get out of these interpreters. Let's actually create a, a Python file. So I'm going to say file, new file, then create a file named hello underscore world dot pi. I'm going to put it in my underscore workspace directory so I can find it a little later. And then I'm going to come in here and say print hello world, right? We got to do the requisite hello world. You can run that from here. Say run module. It says, hey, you didn't save your code. So I saved it, but then after saving it, it runs and it prints out uh, the good old hello world. And let's actually run this from the command line. As I said, I saved this in a folder called underscore workspace. Let's mosey on into that underscore workspace folder. Let's see if we can find it. It's dir, not ls. And there it is. I just type Python, hello underscore world dot py. And boom. Now we've actually run our own code. So we've used the interpreter. We've used uh, the idle program. We have created files of our own. We've run individual files. What's next? Well, you know, from the command prompt, you can actually just type in Python and that'll bring the interpreter right up on the command line right here. So that's number five, actually bringing up the command line, the Python command line tool and interpreter and REPL environment right there. I can say X equals like, I can say Y equals and, I can say Z equals subscribe or Z for you Americans. And then finally print X plus Y plus Z. And it comes back and says, hey, why don't you like and subscribe? And to be honest with you, I don't think that's such a bad idea.